Gordo, aloha! And how you doing? Gordo the Tech Sour here. And welcome to Hibachi Talk. You like my cool new shades? These are awesome, man. It's awesome. Ah, I can see you guys. <laughs> anyway, this is uh, Hibachi Talk. Glad to have you here. I'm here with good old buddy, Andrew, the security guy. Hello, hi, everybody. You're looking pretty good, bud. I don't have the shades like you. I'm as, not quite that cool. But. As sparkly as ever. Please uh, grab yourself a libation, uh, pull up a chair, sit down. We have a groupie in the house, Mr. Maurer. My son. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Anyway, we have a great guest. We have Vincent Yee here today, and this guy has been selling since he was like two. So he's been. <laughs> he had to sell his way out of the womb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's been selling forever, and uh -huh. you know what a great guest to have is someone who's been selling forever, mm -hmm. and you know, has had more rejection notices than anyone else yeah. probably in your said. entire life. Right on. Uh -huh. Oh, here we go. Yeah, life, life, in sales. life in sales. I got some cows for, cows for sale. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and some bridges right after that. Right yeah. after that. Yes. Uh -huh. Anyway, so we're going to talk about about your life in sales okay. and about your stuff that you're doing with your okay. new nectar okay. and, and all all the kinds okay. of things in there. Uh -huh. So um, we have a we um, always like to get a little bit of background on our guests and so on. But before I have to do a rant, I'm okay. I'm really ticked off right now. So okay. and, and that was where he's going. What well, he's never done a rant before. Well, I'm going to rant right now. I'll what I am. I'm done. I just right, I let's gotta, have it. I got to say it. I got to say it. I want to hear okay. this rant. So here we go. Here we go. You know, the state of Hawaii decides to go after Donald Trump because of the uh, uh, the ban. Right. Yep. Now. We weren't even on his list of getting money. How much money do you think we're going to get from the federal government now that we've put ourselves at the top of his list, of his hate list? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. We don't know how to pick I was a wondering, fight. I was wondering about the politics of that particular ploy. Was it just that our case got there first? Is that no, 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 no. We rushed, I think we rushed to get there. To make some headlines. Yeah, to so, make some headlines. Yeah, so the next headlines will be how broke we are without oh, oh, No, support. the next headline is we're going to be a sanctuary state. Now, we can't even take care of our own homeless. But now we're going to be a sanctuary state. Now, I don't care what side of the politics are on, but just be practical. Mm. Okay, now. Sometimes sorry. you get what you ask for, right? <laughs> this may be my that last was your show. Rant. That, was <laughs> that was a gentle rant. Uh -huh. Yeah, this may be All my right. last show. Well. All right, so Vince, tell us where you're from, man. Where'd you okay. grow up? We, we need the whole thing. Okay, sure. Since he secured you okay. up from two years of age, okay. that's tough. But yeah. I was a long, I'm a lifelong Hawaii resident. I actually right born in San Francisco because my parents are there. Three months later, I came to Honolulu, lived here all my life. Um, I grew up in Palolo okay. up until the age of 13, went to St. Patrick's School, St. Louis for the oh. ninth grade. Then I went to Kaiser High School because we moved to Hawaii Kai at the time, so I'm the first graduating class there. I did go to Kapilani Community College, but I did leave after about a year and a half because I decided I'm, I'm the kind of guy that likes to be hands-on and get into the world and make a difference, make some money. and. Uh, help people out with sales, and I've been doing sales ever since I was, uh, gosh, I think it was two, five years old. Maybe <laughs> I entered in school, and in St. Patrick's, they were selling carnival tickets, uh, chocolate candies as fundraisers, holy, holy chicken tickets. So, what years did you go St. Patrick's? The I reason I'm there. asking is my daughter went St. Patrick's. Okay, oh. well, I was born in 1956, so probably six. Oh, months. so you're before her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She'd be so, happy to hear that. So, yeah. what happened was, what I used to do was, I used to. After school, the teachers used to, they were nuns at the time, they said, go ahead and sell some carnival tickets and chocolate candy tickets. And so I used to go to door to door in Palolo and I, no script or no training or no preparation. I just knocked on doors and I started asking people, do you want to buy carnival scripts? We're having a carnival so and so, trying to strike up a conversation. And I guess um, you have to build a rapport. And so what I did was I did sell carnival tickets. I really loved it. You know, I don't know what it is, and I still love it to this day. The rejection doesn't bother me, uh, but there was a time that it did. But you know what I did was um, after school, after I sold the tickets, then um, I turned the money in. And I really didn't play with the other neighborhood kids. They used to play football all the time. We had a big yard. And I didn't play football because I was more interested in selling stuff. Wow. And then so what happened was when summertime rolled around, there's nothing to sell schools out. So then I started playing football because I was the extra. And I was, I, I was really bad at catching the ball. and <laughs> Practicing football every day, I caught the ball and said, hey, you can catch. <laughs> That's what the other guys were saying. So I, I decided to go into uh, sales. But if I had known pro football has more money, I might have gone to pro football. Because <laughs> you could. <laughs> so, you could so, you know, but I, I enjoy sales and I'm comfortable with so you started door to door. I started door to door. Did you get to, to know your neighbors that way? Because oh, I heard, I heard yeah, you say something I thought yeah. was key there. Is he like striking up a conversation? 
yeah, right. to getting to know them. Right, right. You know, and that was it came easy yeah. to me. A lot of people are scared to death. You ever yeah. get those guys knock on your door and they're like, uh, yeah. do you want some? Especially kids, right? Yeah, and so as the years went by, I kind of learned how to handle rejection. Um, there was a time, like, after when I got out of college, I did work for some odd jobs to, you know, to carry myself through. What, did salaries. you sell vacuum cleaners? Uh, no, I did not. Okay, I my did. daughter sold vacuum cleaners. Oh, really? It's a Kirby's. Did, how did she like that? Oh, she, she had it down to a science, man. Oh, she really? Knew it. Cool. Now, she you really sold encyclopedias, right? I sold encyclopedias. What, what, how old were you then? Uh, I was, gosh, in my late 20s at that time. But before that, I sold solar water heaters. That was my early 20s. Wow. And that rejection was so enormous because when I was selling solar water heaters, I never made one sale. And fortunately, wow. the reason why I was fortunate was because that business, went, they went out of business and they were crooks. Now that I, oh, now so that you might have never got your commission yeah, anyway. Yeah, so <laughs> lucky thing I did not. But not all any. solar water heater people are crooks. Yeah, just, they're just not. That, but just at, that that time, at that time, it, just the guys you were yeah, working for. Yeah, just the time that was <laughs> It's amazing you can't sell solar S water heaters S in Hawaii. S S speaking I mean, of that, I have a photo that I, I, I guess is really to bring up. This is someone that may have been selling the wrong product. So, you know, this has got you, no, we have this thing we call you no got one tech job. So this guy got no one tech job, but he had a job in sales. And look at look at look, look at that photo. <laughs> Cadence account. There you go. Uh -huh. You need a little bit of that in sales. Yeah, uh -huh. This is your life in sales. I tell you. Yeah. That that that. that, that uh -huh. <laughs> so so, so, so solar him. water heaters were so a tough sale. That was a tough in Hawaii. One. That was the toughest. What year one. was that? That was when they first came out. Mm -hmm. I think it was maybe. Late 70s. Were there grants and stuff? Were you selling like uh, as a finance you know, deal? I don't, was think, I don't think there was. Well, there might have been a, t a state tax credit. Yeah, or it paid for itself yeah. in 10 oh. years. You had a model, yeah. right? Obviously. But at that but time, it was the first time solar water heaters came out, came out, and it was not very popular at the time. Hmm. That's and, um, you know, so I went into other things. I went into real estate advertising, real estate sales. And real estate sales is a tough one, too. I mean, uh, a few of them make it, but I, I kind of didn't really want to go into real estate because I didn't like the nature of the beast in the sense of if you have a real estate, sometimes you have to collect rent and do repairs. That I didn't like. Hmm. So I, I, when I, for my own personal investments, I go into the stock market rather than real estate investments. I also went into, um, I finally went into, oh, I sold Yellow Pages at one time too. Oh, oh and, remember uh, that? Yeah, but then I, I finally well, got... what was the new book? I, the new guys um, came and wiped, was, uh, wiped oh them gosh, out. Oh gosh, it was... Uh, David, uh, what's his name? David something. He went to, was he went to David? He was at Yellow Pages, then he started at Island... Island yeah. Book or whatever. Different pages. Different pages. And they Brian, almost put the other guys a, out of business. There was a Brian and a Tom. They worked for Hawaiian Telecom, Yellow Pages. And they asked me to go into sales, and I did go into sales so, with them. Yeah, so you imagine what the industry, how technology has changed the industry, right? I mean, yeah. we still get phone books dropped off at our properties, but mm -hmm. I never pick one up. Mm -hmm. Oh, does anybody use it? I don't know. Uh, does anyone use a uh, phone book? With the you, you got out of that one on time, it. brother. Nobody really. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I was the number one phone book salesman in the state uh, of Hawaii. Uh, yeah, now I'm the worst. Yeah, so you were so. so what what year was that? Uh, the Yellow Pages. Uh, that was before the internet became really popular. Um, gosh, I can't even remember, but it was probably the '80s. I think it was. I know the guys were Tom and Brian. You would Brian, sell the yeah. highlighted spot, yeah. and then um, we sold the ads in the Yellow Pages. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and was it by phone, or did you go call um, on business? I as went well? door to door at that time. Did you? I went door to door for a long time. You liked that, huh? Yeah. Well, actually, I was younger then, and I could take the sun. Now I do a different approach in the sense that I do a lot of cold calling now. Okay. And when I do a cold calling, I'll say, "Hi, Andrew. My name is Vincent. Are you interested in?" Sec and I'm with the security camera business. XYZ, and have you thought of uh, changing your security cameras or doing any changes to it? And you might say something, well, I don't have the money. I don't have the budget. My things are fine already. I have already have a vendor that does it. And then I would, and I try to be uh, kind of relaxed. And uh, I, then I mentioned something. i got to try and be polite as well. I also say, well, Andrew, you know, if you ever need a second opinion or would like to shop around and, and uh, compare prices with and products with different vendors let us know and uh, is my phone number on your caller id yeah and if you're and here's my point if, if your phone number is not on my caller id <laughs> guess what i don't answer <laughs> so well, so here's the yeah. thing is i go i got four thousand people on my caller id uh -huh, and i look uh -huh, at it and go like uh -huh. i don't know this uh -huh. phone phone number and i ain't gonna and answer you don't it. answer <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. so, so that's, that, that's something you, you specifically asked them could, could you yeah. ask to be on their caller id yeah i said well if my number's on your caller id can you write that down if not i can give you the phone number 
and if you can write my name down as well. I said, yeah, yeah. Because I like it that way because if I give them the phone number, they might get it wrong, but if they see it on the caller ID, it, it kind of confirms, it reconfirms them that, oh, it's there, I can write it down if I lose it or I get a wrong number. So anyway, I, I asked them if they would like the phone number. My name my name's Vincent, my email's vincent at newnectar.com. I said, okay, that's fine. And they said, oh, by the way, um, I try and cross sell at the same time. I also work with web designers, computer repair guys, and if you have any questions in that area, let me know. And my accountant is in Kaka'ako if you need any help with any taxes. Her name is... Wow, he's like a one-stop yeah, shop, stop, man. When he knocks on your door, you're going to get all these guys. <laughs> Vincent, Vincent, you're like the Costco. You're like Costco. Yeah, he's like Costco. Costco. Yeah, sometimes you can't get all of that in there. You're like the... Excuse me. Yeah. No offense taken, yeah. please. The Chinese Costco. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you can't get all that information out there. They'll cut you off short and says, okay, okay, and they hang up. And then I call... You know, I also ask... If they do that, I said, well, can I send you an email on our services? I said, yeah, sure. Okay, then I sent them an email, and then the next day I follow up. I said, did you get the email? They said, yes, I did. Okay, good. I said, if you have any questions, let me know. And by the way, what I forgot to mention in my last conversation is my accountant is Felice Valmish. She lives in Kaka She works in Kaka'ako, and she does very good work. So if you ever have questions on any bookkeeping, payroll taxes, let me know and I'll put you in touch with her. So that's the area, that's what you do when they cut you short. Because Andrew might say, okay, that's it. I'm just taking your name and number. I can't, and I got to go. I got yeah. something to do. I mean, that sounds... So I say, can I send you an email? So that sounds very, yeah. sounds like me and, and, and things like this. So, but, so of all the things that you've been selling, so you, you're giving some good advice on how to, how to spread and keep the, keep the, the potential the client method. engaged. The method to keep the client engaged. So what's the... Besides the water heaters, what's the toughest thing you've ever had to sell? Accounting is very tough. Uh, okay. Is it? Are people already it, comfortable with their uh, accountant? You have to have extra rapport. You, the rapport you build with other areas like technology is okay. But with accounting, you have to have a very super go good rapport. They have to trust you. They're trusting you with numbers. They're tax trusting you with your tax situation. If you get, if they run into any problems with the IRS or state tax office, you're on the hook too. And they're going to say, why, why did I ever go up with this guy who referred me to this accountant? Then I'm stuck with all of these numbers. And not only that, you know, people don't always file their taxes on time or not. they miscalculate <laughs> and they don't file good not. returns, you know. So when that wow. happens, no, that, that doesn't happen. That does happen. So when that happens, you really need a buddy, uh, uh, someone super trustworthy in the accounting field. And accounting takes time to build a rapport. Speaking of accounting, trust. should we pay some bills? Yes. <laughs> that's, Andrew, a good, that's, a that's a good segue. That's a good great segue. Yeah, this yeah. is a great segue. So um, we're going to go. We're going to go pay some bills and promote some of the great shows that are on Hibachi Talk. Score to the tech star, Andrew the security guard, Vincent E. <laughs> the, uh -huh. He can sell snowballs to the Eskimos. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll be back in about a minute. Hi, I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia. I'm the host of Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. It's a program where we discuss the impact of change on workers, employers, and the economy. So join us every other Tuesday from 4 o'clock to 4.30. We're live in the studio on Working Together in Think Tech Hawaii. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Aloha, my name is Joe Kent, and I'm the Vice President of Research at the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. The Grassroot Institute is a public policy think tank, and we try to build a better economy in Hawaii, and you can see us on the TV show E Hana Kako on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcasting Network every Monday at 2 o'clock. We'll see you there, and let's build a better Hawaii together. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to Bachi Talk, everybody. Andrew, the security guy here. Uh, I wanted to give you a quick update on the Dahua hack. I know we talked a little bit about this massive DDoS problem that occurred recently on the internet. Um, Dahua had about, uh, I think, 60 or 80,000 of these devices that uh, were hacked that were part of that DDoS attack. So they really took a beating. Um, they have come out with a firmware update. So if you took those devices offline, there's a list available right now online where you can go and you can find it. If your device was one of those types, you can go ahead and get new firmware and get that firmware update and get those devices back online. 
Presumably they're safe now. You may just want to change those devices completely. That's up to you. I just thought it was important that you know that there's some fixes out there that are available. So go check those out. Um, we picked Angus up off the beach, but he was wearing a hat, and it didn't look like a beach hat. Angus, what's going on with that, buddy? How you doing there, Drew? Good to see good you, to man. See ya. Welcome back. Hey, McGee, how are you doing there, lad? <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you, young man. You know, it's a famous day for you, you know, St. Patrick's Day. Oh, that's right. It yeah. St. Patrick's School, too. That's right. St. Patrick's Day, St. Patrick's School. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay, right. It's terrific. I got my St. Patrick's hat on because uh -huh, uh -huh. we used to fight the Scots. That matches your kilt. <laughs> it matches my kilt. I love that. I know. Yeah, yeah. Every, every time someone sees it, oh, I like your wee hat because it looks like you got your wee bit horny. <laughs> so there goes the Alevo show. Yeah. Gone for that one. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, uh, hey, thank you for having me. Nice to see you. Welcome. It's like a whole new world. <laughs> Terrific. So, you know, like, I, I got a wee bit of a... Like, Gordon has tried to upstage me on the rants, but I got a wee bit of a rant. You got a rant as yeah, well? Because I go to University oh, of New okay. Athletics all the time. Uh -huh. So, just the other day that I was at the baseball game, and I took a wee bit of a few photos of what's going on over there. Come on, David Lasner. Get your act together here, lad. Look at this. This is the men's room. Broken since when? There's, there's a, 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 a towel dispenser. Been broken since whenever. And oh, the fire system doesn't even make me feel very safe. Ooh, that's at the baseball field. Uh, this is at the baseball field, the parking lot, and the restrooms. Wow. Come on, guys. Where's all my taxpayer money going? We need that maintenance. Where's your tuition money going? Thank you, Mr. E. Well, maybe we get David to come on and talk about that. Maybe you should sell hats. <laughs> maybe hats? Or a hat, <laughs> adjust, a hat adjuster. Okay. Anyway, this is Angus McTech telling everybody, you know, happy St. Patrick's Day. Be safe out there. And remember, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha. Aloha, Angus. <laughs> right on. So, hey, get on down and support UH Athletics. I know uh, baseball team's doing pretty well. I think they got some hitters this year. Uh, I guess you don't want to use the facilities <coughs> or maybe use them at your own risk, apparently. There's some maintenance issues down there. <laughs> If Angus, if Angus is bugged about it, it's probably grim. <laughs> Use the <mention> uh, <laughs> And by the way, they are doing very well, except they lost the last two games. Yeah, that's so. all right. They got some hitters. So uh, we're back. We're talking about the life, a life in sales, a life lived in sales. Yeah. So, so, so I'm just, I want to get back to this because you got into this. You gave up KCC, kind of walked out of junior college. Mm -hmm. I want to go make some money. You already have been talking to people since you're grade school years mm -hmm. basically going door to door mm -hmm. then you took that into cold call sales mm -hmm. and what do you what do you think was in that progression for you i mean what, what do you think was the driver was it was it meeting people was it it's, your success it's money. Or how it's, did it it was the satisfaction of people buying a product or service and they're happy with it you know? ah. um, sales has been in my family for a while because my grandfather was a door-to-door -door shoe salesman he made a lot of money. Wow, okay. And so he had this big house in Palola <laughs> Avenue. And I thought if my grandfather could okay, sell Okay, I got to interrupt. Door. What kind of shoe you would sell in Hawaii? I, I <laughs> slippers. He did. <laughs> he stored those slippers. But you know, That's he, awesome. Did he, he make them? He, no, he imported them. They were women's shoes. Oh, and, okay. And this was like, I think, in the 1940s. <laughs> The 30s, Pre, 40s, pre -war, and 50s, sure. yeah. And a lot of people were going barefoot. But he managed to <laughs> find he managed to find people that could buy shoes. And they, That's tough. And, that he, and he sold it on credit too. So he trusted the people. You know, you wow. a person eye to eye contact. He trusted them. The customers paid on credit. And he was, from what I heard from my uh, dad and his <coughs> siblings, they, he was very good at. Uh, uh, assessing people that whether they're going to be paying them on credit or not, and they did pay on credit. He made a ton of he made a lot of money. So, my father uh, grew up in a pretty much well-to-do neighborhood at that time. Palola Valley. But well, not Palola <laughs> Palola Avenue, yeah, uh, right behind McDonald's. So, at that time, close Palola, to not Howley Kai, which was on the other side, it wasn't no, even built it, yet. You no, know, it was on Wailai and Palola, right behind McDonald's. Oh, oh wow. So what happened was, um, I, he he sold he sold shoes, and his four children helped him out, especially the two older ones. The they kind of learned the business. My father was a third, so my dad didn't go into sales. So my Auntie Lucy sold real estate. She did very well. And her daughter Kitty had some retail store doing very well as well. And I thought, gosh, I think I could do sales too. It started with my grandfather. So in the and blood. That, that image got projected on me. I mean, I didn't actually see him sell, sell the shoes, but I heard stories about it. And at a young age, it kind of made an imprint. So I thought, if he can 
oh. do sales, and I can do sales as nice well. Nice pun. <laughs> Selling shoes didn't make an imprint. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. You have to know. So, question for you. I had, so, so, what advice would you give to people? You've been in the business a long time, and people that want to get into sales. What kind of guiding advice would you want to give them to, would it, um, you know, to be able to handle the rejection, but at the mm. same time to be successful in okay. sales? I think one of the most important part is listening to what the customer has to say. Even though you know your product's really good, um, listen to what they have to say, strike up a conversation, build a rapport, have them get to trust you. And then once you can do that, then um, you can ask them, tell me about your situation and if there's a way I can help you with this or that. And um, they may not be ready at the time, but you keep in touch with them over the years. You can call them, email them, or text them. And then you can also, um, you know, take them out to coffee. Like I, like there was one customer, he thought he was going to sell me his product. I thought I was going to sell him his product, you know. So what happened was I, I said, let's go to coffee. So we went to coffee thinking he was going to help me sell, sell his stuff to me. So I said, okay. And I knew I wanted to sell something to him, but I just let the conversation flow, let him say what he wanted to say. And he told me about his products and services. And I said, well, great. I'm, you know, I'm going to keep this in mind in case I find any prospective clients. I'd like to refer them over to you. And by the way, I'm in the areas of web design, computer repair, and accounting services. So if you know of anyone else, let me know. And he said, fine. It was a pleasant conversation. We went on a merry way. I do keep in touch with him now and then. But no one bought anything. And nobody bought, but you never know. They, they may have someone later on down the line. It goes around. They may have goes, a friend or family around. that could use a service or product. Hmm. Over, and over so time. what happens now is when I cold call people, I do like to ask them for coffee because it's such a relaxing atmosphere. But if they don't want to do that, then I meet at their, co their office as well. And when I do talk to them now, I've learned a lesson that I ask them, you know, um, if, we, if I could meet you in person, just so that in case we can offer any, help you with your business, and if you're interested in our business in the future. And I mentioned first that your business first, because they're important. So I want them to know that I'm there to help them promote so their business or service. So your advice is like build that relationship the with rapport, the potential client. Yeah, Expect yeah. that it won't happen immediately, that yeah. it will happen, well, you it happen over yeah, time. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, but in Hawaii, though, here's I was going to say, I think, I Go think ahead. there's a little more. Sorry to interrupt you. I think, no. Um, no, you're not. Today, we're, today, <laughs> today, we're, we're, when we focus on that, we really actually have to understand how our, what we're bringing to that business helps their, helps their business. Yeah, like from a, yeah. from a, the financial perspective, right? right? So right. the securities always had that problem. Security, they mm -hmm. say it was like buying insurance, all mm -hmm. this extra cost. So mm -hmm. today we've been challenged to bring like analytic data mm -hmm. that actually informs mm -hmm. the business and makes the business mm -hmm. smarter, makes mm -hmm. the business money. Mm -hmm. If we can't make the business money with mm -hmm. the solution we're bringing in mm -hmm. the door, um, we have, might have a hard, hard time mm -hmm. uh, closing that sale mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And that's uh, definitely the enterprise perspective. And it's trickling. That's becoming more, more and more important to small and medium-sized businesses as well. well no, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, the challenge we have mm -hmm. is that you know when mm -hmm. I when I'm out there and you're always you're always selling, but. Uh, the thing is, what's the economic value to what I am purchasing or acquiring from you? You know, what is that economic value? Yeah. And if, if they can't see an economic value, that, that kind of takes a, a, a chunk away. Then you've got the risk part. That takes a piece away. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to buy it because it feels good. I don't see that happening that much anymore. Yeah, I don't, that discretionary, yeah, that discretionary feel good yeah. income is not really yeah. available anymore. Yeah, you not have in to business. Go over, you have to go over all the... Uh, the benefits for them, save for accounting, you know, we want to save on your taxes, yeah. get you some tax shelters, tax credits, and things like that. So that's the benefit for you. Straighten out your books, and, you know, you have more peace of mind, that kind of thing. That's the benefit you're selling. Uh, with technology, you want to make your life easier with um, computer programming and stuff like that. We want to have uh, computer repair. We want to make sure you have a maintenance program so you get 24-hour service from us mm -hmm. in case there's an emergency, things like that. And what I have found is with um, cold calling, I do a phone call because to me a phone call is more effective and more impactful than an email. And an in-person contact is more important than a phone call. And I found that out through, oh, I yeah, listen to YouTube I videos totally on sales. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I like to ask people if I could give them my business card, say hello to them in person. In case you have any questions, you know who I am. They can size me up and I can size them up. So too. are you using social media? Like are you on LinkedIn? Um, are I'm you on Facebook? Um, any of those things where yes, I can I can check you out ahead of time? Yes, yes I am. I'm on LinkedIn. 
In fact, what I do is, um, because I don't act do actually do the work of web design or computer repair or accounting, I forward an email of the people that do that work. I put in a LinkedIn profile, and I like to strike a conversation. Say, for instance, a web designer. I mentioned that I'm a web, I represent a web designer who's in San Diego now, and we'd like to offer you a free consultation. They said, well, I already have a vendor, and very good. I said, well, if you ever need a second opinion, let us know, and, he, and can I send you an email? And just his LinkedIn profile, they say, okay, fine. I said, okay, and this person that I represent, he does so very well in his field, uh, that on the subject line, I am going to type La Creme de la Creme. Mm. My boss's name, Philippe Tassin, Magnum Opus. And if you want to look up what Agnum, oh, Magnum, Magnum Opus, it's a, a Opus One. It's a great wine. You can get. <laughs> <laughs> it's about two hundred eight dollars a bottle. Uh, it's awesome. That's out of my league. <laughs> So, <laughs> so I say, and if you want to look up what Agnum, Magnum Opus is uh, it, uh, on the internet, go ahead because it accurately describes him. And I strike up this kind of conversation because sometimes it's something different, you know, mm -hmm. that they don't hear every sure. day. So, so, Vin so, so Vincent, so um, um, you've got we're running up, um, running out of time. So, Vincent, so give us a little bit of your latest endeavor, what you're working on now, um, I, the Nectar. Okay. okay, what's that? All about? Yeah, yeah, nectar, nectar. nectar is it is web design. Okay. Web applications, intranet, digital strategies like if you need e-commerce, uh, uh, scheduling, pricing, and then um, email marketing as well, and online ser online marketing like pay per click. I also work with uh, technicians from Your Tech Connection, Cocoa PC, Aloha Computer Consulting, and um, we do computer repair, upgrading hardware, software, so virus removal, internet connection. Fast so you're focusing on the local businesses. Yes. You're making it sure it stays here and and things like this. Yeah, well, well, not necessarily. I also work with mainland clients okay. in web design. Well, well that's good. You're working with mainland clients, but uh -huh. if you keep the work here, that's good. Yeah. That's yeah. the key. And, and check out New Nectar. They got yeah. a sock high yeah. on there. Nice, yeah. Yeah. nice, cool nice job on the site. Cool thing. Anyway, so believe it or not, we burned through. Okay. We burned okay. through it all. We we quick announcement. Um, again, I want to remind everybody that the April oh, yeah. Foolish Party is coming up on um, Make a Wish. April the seventh. Make a wish. Um, we raise about fifty thousand dollars for Make a Wish. So please, um, if you go online, do search it on Google with Bing or search it on Bing with Google, whatever, <laughs> and then you'll be there. And if not, I've got tickets. So anyway, no guest goes unrewarded. Oh, great. Here's your autographed solo oh, cup, number one ten in you. the series. Okay. Don't sell it to anybody. I won't. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth anything yeah. yet. And as we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. Hey, how, how you, you doing? doing?